It is Pentecost Sunday, the day the church celebrates the gift of the Holy Spirit. Fifty days after the Feast of Passover, the ancient Jews celebrated Pentecost as a celebration of the giving of the law and as a springtime harvest festival. For Christians, it was on Pentecost that the Holy Spirit came into the upper room with the sound of a rushing violent wind and tongues of fire distributed and rested on the head of each of the disciples. They burst forth from the upper room with the new energy and a new confidence and the ability to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in every known language, offering the gospel to the world. That's what we're remembering and celebrating today. It is on Pentecost that we especially train our attention to the subject of the Holy Spirit, and therein lies a problem. Because we're never exactly sure of what we believe and understand. We're a bit like the missionary who went to Japan and began explaining the heart of the faith. The audience replied, Honorable Father, we understand. Honorable Son, we understand. Honorable bird, we do not understand. If we're being truly honest, we're right there with them. When it comes to God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, we understand. When it comes to God the Son and the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, we understand. But when it comes to God the Holy Spirit, we're a little less sure of what we know. We may remember that symbolically, the Holy Spirit is often depicted as a descending dove, or as fire, or as wind. We may remember that there are gifts of the Holy Spirit and fruits of the Holy Spirit, as they are called in the epistles. We may remember something about speaking in tongues, and we know that as Presbyterians, we're not really into that. So with our Japanese brothers and sisters, we can truthfully say, honorable bird, we do not understand. That makes our purpose clear this morning. Let's see if we can't get a little clarity about who the Holy Spirit is and why it matters. In John's Gospel, Jesus tells the disciples, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. If you hear a legal tone in those words, it is not without reason. The word we translate advocate is in the Greek parakletos. A paraclete is one who is called in alongside of another to comfort, assure, strengthen, or encourage. In some instances, the word paraclete was used to refer to a defense attorney in a court of law. The language that Jesus uses is full of significance and importance. Remember the context of Jesus' words. He is in the upper room with his disciples on the night of his betrayal and arrest. In less than 24 hours, he will be dead. The connection between Jesus and the disciples will be lost. Jesus is preparing his disciples for the feelings of grief, sorrow, fear, and uncertainty that death always brings. Jesus anticipates what his friends are about to experience and assures them that though all evidence will point to the contrary, he is with them and will be with them. Jesus will be with them through the person of the paraclete, the advocate, the helper, the comforter. Jesus will be there. They will never be alone. This one who comes will be a truth teller. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he wants to hear. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. The spirit will bring the truth of Jesus' message and mission to us. And through us, continue to take that message and mission of Jesus into the world. 
The Spirit will not contradict Jesus or disagree with Jesus. The Spirit will empower disciples of every age to testify in word and deed what they have witnessed in the life of Jesus Christ. The one who comes will speak with authority. Nevertheless, I tell you, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. The Spirit will not only help the believing community see and understand these ultimate truths, but will also impart the courage to witness to them before an unbelieving world. The Advocate, the promised helper, will inspire spiritual insight and moral courage. The Comforter will comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable and lead the community of believers to do that work too. And the one to come will connect us to the creative genius of the Father, the redemptive work of the Son, and the courageous witness of the Church. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The work of the Holy Spirit is to keep the connections between the church and God and the church and the world strong and vital. The Spirit maintains the life-giving, life-changing relationship that exists between God and the church and between individual believers who comprise the church. And that reminds us that chief among the Spirit's working is this, to remind us that we are never alone. This ancient good news that nothing can separate us from the love of God is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the artery through which the love of God enters our world. The Spirit bonds, join us together, you and me, to the mystical body of Christ in every age and place. The Spirit is the source of the power we need to do the work of God in our world today. And we do not need to pray to be filled with the Spirit. The Spirit is all around us, like the air itself. All we need to do is open the window and let the breeze of the Spirit blow into our lives. All we need to do is to make ourselves available to the Spirit, and the Spirit will come in, empowering us to be God's people and to do God's work. All we need to do is offer ourselves to the presence and power of the Spirit, and we will find ourselves doing the very things Jesus did. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. With celebration of that promise, we say, Come, Holy Spirit. Come, creating Spirit. Come, life giving, life sustaining Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And stay for now and evermore. Amen.